thing. Yeah. Have you ever studied the connection between um, fungus and, and, and soil? I think I just screwed something up with the microphone, Jamie. My mic just cut out. Oh, no. it's back. There it is. I, no. I stepped on this cable. I think I disconnected it. No. Um, have you ever studied like uh, all the science that's being done on the way plants communicate with each other through the soil and through fungus and mycelium? No. It's no. fascinating stuff. Uh-huh. They allocate resources to, to plants that need them more, to trees that need them more. They seem to have... Communal? Yeah. They, yeah, they seem to have some sort of a shared information network hmm. that we don't totally understand. See if you can find something on it. But it's... I mean, I, I think relatively recently understood hmm. and just basically understood over the last few decades. But uh, people like Paul Stamets, who's a mycologist, has been studying this type of stuff. And hmm. it's really amazing. Like, there's some sort of intelligence to it, the way it works. Uh-huh. What does it say? Underground networking, the amazing connections beneath your feet. Well, maybe evolution went in the direction of, of interconnection because maybe the survival value was higher if you connected these Scroll things. Scroll down, Jamie, to right, right, right there. So this is what it's saying. Um, <clears throat> when most of us think of fungus, we imagine mushrooms sprouting out of the ground. These mushrooms are, in fact, the fruit of the fungus. While the majority of the fungal organism lives in the soil, interwoven with the tree roots as a vast network of mycelium. Mycelium are incredibly tiny threads of the greater fungal organism that wraps around or bore into tree roots. Taken together, mycelium composes what's called a my- mycorrhizal network, which connects individual plants together to transfer water, nitrogen, carbon, and other minerals. German forester Peter Wallen, how do you say that? Wall, Wallaben, Wallaben, dubbed this network the, the wood wide web, as it is through the mycelium that trees communicate. This is really, really fascinating stuff. Because mm. They're all like we just think of soil as something that the tree pulls nutrients from, but no, it's it's all they're communicating. They're connected with each other in the forest. Well, realize that when you have a chemical process involving life, you are in some sense looking at a quantum computer. It's doing a quantum calculation. Yeah, it's taking nutrients from the soil, nutrients from the air, combining it to create cellulose or whatever it's made of. And so we're talking about something that we cannot duplicate without gigantic devices looking like a chandelier. Mother Nature can do it with a root. Yeah, it, it can do it with everything. It seems to be in, in insects. It seems to there's, – there's like a code to it, which is why your idea about there being this God calculation is so fascinating. It seems like it, it just moves in a very certain way. And it's all connected to each other in some way that we're, as human beings, just sort of starting to understand. Well, there is a theory that says that the Big Bang went in a direction compatible to life. And that other universes may not be compatible with life. They may be lifeless collections of electrons and neutrinos, for example. But our universe is special. Our universe has stable protons, out of which you could create atoms, out of which you could create DNA, out of which you can create people. How many universes have that property? So string theory, for example, gives you other universes which are probably dead universes, universes which have no life. But our universe has stable protons, stable DNA, stable forms of life.